Welcome to Your Life with your hosts, Dr. Tony Hare and Dan DeBruler. Together, we're exploring the questions everyone has about life, love, parenting, and relationships. Tony Hare is an independent certified coach, teacher, and speaker with the John Maxwell team, author and inspirational speaker who lives in Fayetteville, North Carolina. He has a bachelor's degree in criminal justice, a master's degree in pastoral counseling, and a doctorate of philosophy in Christian counseling. Dan DeBruler is a retired U.S. Army communications specialist and has spent more than 20 years encouraging listeners through Christian radio. Now I'll tell you, it's good to be here with you today, brother man. <laughs> you know, it's been so hot. Last week was just miserable yes. hot. Absolutely. And today has almost felt like a vacation from that. <laughs> And yesterday. Yes, sir. Dan, it is exciting uh, to be here with you again today and uh, excited about this opportunity to continue uh, to discuss uh, one of the biggest issues we have, not just in our communities or not just in uh, our uh, states or cities, but in the entire world. And with all that's going on right now, we can always come back to what the major issue is, and that is men in their rightful positions as fathers, as husbands, as rulers over that which God has given us to rule, all that he created and all that he made in the visible world. You know, I had a conversation that's similar to what we're talking about today, and that is um, relative to um, how we see things in our world. And, and I'm, when I say our world, yes. you know, I'm going to confine that thought to <laughs> to here in the United States. Yes. You know, we get really confused. We, mm-hmm. we go back to the time when uh, Jesus was teaching, when the disciples who's, and, and the, the others whose letters we read yes the time that they lived in was very difficult and they could be compelled mm-hmm. to do something yes you know it, it was a difference between um that a vast difference between that and where we are at today we have a tendency to get caught up and to be distracted by our rights our freedoms <laughs> and we don't have a real concept of what kingdom living is all about and i think that's kind of where we're going to go with this conversation today, mm-hmm. yes. talking about a kingdom and understanding what a kingdom even is so that we can learn who we're to be within that kingdom, the kingdom of God. Absolutely, Dan. And that is uh, one of the major issues that I'm quite sure that many of us see. Um, and But most of the time, we don't talk much about uh, kingdoms. Pastors don't talk to uh, talk much about the kingdom from the pulpit. They talk about things that are in the kingdom, but they don't talk about the kingdom. And uh, when we talk about the kingdom of God, I mean, we're we're actually uh, well, it could be uh, defined as uh, the visible, comprehensive uh, rule of God uh, over every area of our lives and it is uh we could even shorten that up and say the kingdom of god is god's rule uh is it's god's plan and, and god's program uh for man on the earth god has a plan for us uh in his in the bible but most of the time because we are living on earth we're in the world that we live according to the world now we don't think we do we don't think we do, but if we have any doubt about that, if there's any doubt about that, just look around you. Uh, read the newspaper. When you watch the news, we can ask ourselves with all the, the Christians uh, in the United States of America or, or, or all around the world, we can ask ourselves who is really Ruling Are the believers, is the kingdom rule of God in place, or are we living based on um, a democratic rule, which we know our country is, is about democracy, but the kingdom of God should still be usurping authority in that arena by putting godly men and women in place to implement God's rule, God's plan, and God's program in this democracy. So where is it that we fit 
within the kingdom agenda. I mean, uh, Tony Hare, Dan DeBruler, a guy named Bob that we work with. <laughs> where do we fit in, in this kingdom agenda that God has? Well, I think first and foremost, we are God's agenda. Let's put it this way. Um, Jesus is Jesus. Uh, idea in coming to earth was not to bring a religion and we've got trapped off into a religion and uh, we've allowed ourselves to be reduced to a religion where we can be compared to other religions, Buddhism, uh, uh, Islam. We, we can be, we, we allowed ourselves to be reduced to that when what we are in is a relationship with the king of the universe. And that relationship is personal. Religions are based on a way of life, things you do uh, uh, to stay in right order. Well, we uh, have been uh, put in or accepted a relationship with Jesus Christ where, uh, uh, as we look at Matthew 6, 33, for example, um, it says, starting at verse 31, Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat or what shall we drink? Uh, what shall we wear? R- remember, here we're talking about eat, drink, and wear. For all these things the Gentiles seek, the non-Jews seek these things. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. So now, our heavenly Father knows this, meaning that we are his children, sons and daughters of God. But verse 33 says, but seek first the kingdom of God. Now, to seek does not mean to look for something as if it wasn't there, but it means to search, to crave. And when we look at even thinking about craving, we're talking about crave enough to sacrifice for. But seek first the kingdom of God and what else? His righteousness. That conjunction there is so important. We're seeking the kingdom of God, the rule of God, the plan of God, the program of God, and we're seeking it his righteousness, the right way of functioning when it comes to our relationship with God and the right way of functioning when it comes to our relationship with others. And the word of God says all these things, what things, what you will eat, what you will drink, what you will wear, these things will be added to you. Why? Because they're in the kingdom and you are in the kingdom seeking all the things that uh, are, are, are yours. It says, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own troubles. So when I'm Dealing with today, I don't bring tomorrow stuff, next year stuff, next month stuff. I don't bring that into today. Today, I seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And so when we talk about that kingdom agenda, well, this is the agenda of God looks at is comprehensive. Put it that way. And it, it, it includes the individual. It includes the church. It includes the community. It includes the government. So when we think about the kingdom agenda, you and I, Dan, as God's rulers here on earth, him giving us dominion way back in Genesis, Jesus coming, going to the cross, dying, and rising again, giving us back what Adam gave up, dominion. God gave us dominion uh, over. And so now we're in a position to exercise that dominion. So we bring out or carry out God's agenda on the earth by exercising God's rule in the place that in the territory he has given us earth. Well, the problem now is very similar to the problem that existed at the time Jesus a- came. Absolutely. We have we have reduced things to religion, to yes. a set of practices, yes. to to a group of things that we do and we begin looking for the thing. Yes. And even when Jesus came, as he was speaking to those early disciples, yes, sir. he was he was trying to explain to them, the kingdom of God is coming in a way, you, you can't see it, you can, and it's obvious you don't understand it. Mm-hmm. And he began to try to teach again and again that in his presence was the king of or the kingdom of God. That's where it existed. Absolutely. And see that that kingdom agenda that you were talking about, that that is the it's the it's a demonstration of that comprehensive rule of God. It's how we live out 
uh, God's righteousness. And that's why it says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, his right way of doing things, not our way, because Tony does have a way that seems right. See, but the ends thereof of Tony's way is death. It's not, it doesn't produce, uh, and I'll say, it doesn't produce the potential that God placed within me. And when we consider how we function here on the earth, doing it our way, uh, doing it man's way, limits the potential or caps or causes it or puts us in a position where we decide to allow the potential that God has given us to rule, we allow it to lie dormant. So as a result, we begin to worry. We become anxious. All of the things that the body was not built for, all of the things that we weren't built for, they find themselves uh, in place by our lack of knowledge of who we are in him. Yeah, and you know, I, I think about how John uh, wrote mm-hmm. about things. He, you know, how, how Jesus spoke as he was praying for himself, that, that last prayer that he prayed in the garden mm-hmm. the, the night before he was arrested, and he began to talk about eternal life he just yes. he mentions that in his prayer he said now this is eternal life mm-hmm. that they know you the only true god and jesus christ whom you have sent yes and i would have to think that as we are drawing close to that mm-hmm. that that's where we find the kingdom of god and as we get beyond that rule as we get beyond mm-hmm. being in his presence we're mm-hmm. not in the kingdom of god I, although we are it's 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 a Odd thing uh, for for me as a, a lifetime American to to really grab hold of. You know, you said that early yes. in the game. It is difficult for us to understand the concept of kingdom. Absolutely. I, what I found myself doing over the last uh, few years of really trying to grasp uh, this, and when I really started looking at it, I, I've had instructors uh, who actually assisted me in getting a better understanding of this. And when I look at Luke 17, verse 20, it it opened my eyes even more. And we've read these scriptures several, several, several times. Many of us have. Uh, But in 1720, he says, being asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them, the kingdom of God is not coming with, uh, coming with, Uh, something, it's not something observable. No one will say, see here or there. And this was so important in verse 21. For you see, the kingdom of God is in your midst. And this is coming from the CSB, but the new King James and the King James will say the kingdom of God is with in you. Now that is uh, requires you to have a shift in thinking. Requires me to have a shift in thinking from understanding uh, how kingdoms come, because basically we know or our experience in uh, the life that we have been living, in this world that we live in, is that. Kingdoms come with observation. We see, and especially in the days of um, uh, when this was written, we would see kings, how we knew a king was coming. We would see all the, 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 the pomp and stance all coming before him. We would see everything, all the crowd, and everyone would know the king is coming after all of these things uh, 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 come through, all the stuff that came before him, um, the the announcement that he's coming, uh, almost like a parade, (laughs) so to speak, uh, that he was coming. And so the disciples were looking at things from that perspective, but Jesus wanted them to look at things through the lens of what he had said in Matthew uh, chapter 4, verse 7. 17, his first words in beginning his ministry was to repent, change your mind, uh, for the kingdom, once again, of God is at hand or is near. Here in Luke, he's saying it's so near that it is within you. That is perplexing to us, but he's talking about the rule 
the rule of God, the rule, the kingdom of heaven, it is within you and it will manifest itself, be brought forth so that the world can see it by how you live, which takes us right back to uh, Matthew six thirty three and seeking the kingdom of God first and his righteousness, his right way of conducting ourselves, his right way of conducting ourselves with others. And these things, are it's so important how the Bible just comes all together. It's just one message. And the message is about the kingdom of God. And to get a better understanding of it, we really have to go back and look at what we learned about kingdoms coming through high school um, and senior high school. Uh, We were taught about Rome. And you think about it, when Jesus came, and this was really what took me, Dan, when Jesus came to the earth, Rome was ruling the entire world, the kingdom of Rome. And so Jesus came in a time that he was changing every idea about what a real kingdom Was And that's why he was able to say with so much, his first words were the kingdom, the real, the true kingdom is here now. That what you guys have been seeing? Now, let let me show you who you really are. When you look at him, you see yourself uh, uh, when you look at Christ and when you look at this word and you begin to understand who you are uh, relative to living in the kingdom and the authority and power that you have. I'm glad you began to bring context into this because... We have to remember that the these words were spoken to men and women who knew what a kingdom was. Yes. They, they knew what it was like to be within the context yes. of a kingdom. Yes, sir. And in that regard, their idea of a Messiah mm-hmm. was very different. And their, their <laughs> idea of a Messiah was totally relative <laughs> to the situation that they were in. You yes. mentioned that Rome yes. ruled most of the known world at that time. They were looking for deliverance yes. from, from that oppression yes. rather than the deliverance that God was offering. So yes. they, they kind of missed the concept yes. of the kingdom that Jesus was talking about yes. and the kingdom that we know now. I mean, we could look back and we could see it yes. because we could see the context and we could Absolutely. see beyond that. Yes. But at the time, they they were missing. They, they failed to grasp what Jesus was saying at all. And that's why in so many places throughout the Gospels, mm-hmm. it is reiterated. That's right. That's right. And the thing, Dan, when you think about it with the way that you just spoke about it and how we change what is happening in our world today, when Jesus came and they spoke about the kingdom from looking outside of themselves, Jesus says the kingdom of God is within you. Jesus wanted us to change our way of thinking and look inside. Because this is where the kingdom of God is. Now allow it to manifest itself coming through you so that the world can see. So even today, we have to shift how we think. They were looking outside then at how they saw kingdoms coming. Jesus says, no, I want you to change how you think, according to Matthew, because the kingdom of of God is at hand. It's near. Luke says it's so near that it is within you. Very seldomly do we want to look at ourselves. Tony had to uh, learn how to look at himself from the inside out. Tony had to learn that other people were not his problem. Tony had to learn that Tony was his problem. And Tony had to wrestle with how Tony was brought up to think living in this world and get an understanding of how God wanted him to think in living in the kingdom of God. And those two wrestle every single day of the week. So I feed the spirit of God, the kingdom of God that is that is within me so that it can have influence over the old Tony. You see, uh, and that's the struggle that all of us have every single day. Our greatest fight is against the old individual, not the new. So it's almost like we have two kingdoms battling against one one another each and every day within ourselves. The spirit, see, battling against 
the flesh. We know that the sin nature is dead, but sin is not a problem of the spirit. Sin is a problem of the flesh, the appetites that we've awakened from the things that we did. We're in this flesh all day, and that's where sin is in the flesh. It's a problem of the flesh. It is not a problem of the spirit, you know, because the spirit is holy. But those two battle each and every day, but the more we feed the Spirit, the Word of God, we get to see the kingdom of God come forth as the rule of God, the kingdom of heaven, sits on the throne of our heart. Now, we've talked about this many times before, yes, sir. and we, we look at the problems around us. We look at the things that, that we see that are not lining up with what we know to be true in Absolutely. the Word of God. And we can look all the way back, mm-hmm. you know, just after the, the creation story, <laughs> this, this problem began. Yes. And it's a problem of identity. Yes, it's a it problem is. of understanding who we were made Absolutely. to be. It's a problem of understanding what a kingdom looks like mm-hmm. and, and what the kingdom looks like in our world mm-hmm. today and yes. within us even. It's, absolutely. it's all about identity, about understanding who it, we are. It absolutely. And it's so, it can be seen Every day. I was uh, at an event this uh, weekend, uh, uh, um, at a, a cookout. And at that event, I saw this particular gentleman who was acting out this comedian. He was dressed like the comedian, talking like the comedian. And I was, I said to myself, you know, I said, man, he identifies with this comedian in such a way he looks like him, talks like him, dresses like him, and everything. And I was sharing it with one of my uh, partners that was there. I said, hey, man, this, I said, man, my man is putting on a good show here. And it had been an hour or so and uh, two hours. And I said, now, he's still acting like this comedian, you know. And I asked my, my partner, I said, hey, man, what's, what's up with this guy? He says, man, this is every day. This is how he dresses. This is how he goes to. This is every day. And it, the thing that came to my mind right then, Dan, was This is what has happened to us as believers. We have taken on another identity so strong that we have forgotten who we really are. This particular individual was not even himself anymore. He loved this particular comedian that he was dressing out like and acting out like. He loved him so much, he became him externally. So imagine what he had to do in his thinking to do that. And this is what has happened to us. Even after accepting Christ, we become so enveloped in what the world has uh, uh, acclimated to what we have begin to uh, accept. From a world's perspective, and it's fun, it's enjoyable, it gets us the attention that we need, it, it, it gets us the love we think that we desire, it gives us all the external things that we want, and we allow the inside of us where the kingdom of God is to lie, to, 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 to lie dormant, uh, where the uh, dominion that we have to rule over, it's not even in place. You know, it's like as if we've asked God or asked Christ to move over. Let me take this seat for a few minutes and uh, let me show you how I would do this thing. And, you know, that that brings up another problem altogether <laughs> that we begin. And, and I'm sorry if I'm stepping on toes here, but if your toes are in the aisle, just pull them back a little bit. <laughs> we'll avoid that. I think we do that um, sometimes with good intentions. We, yeah. we think that we're mimicking Christ when we mimic what we have yes. learned yes. from the church when yes. we do when we act like we're acting yes. right when yes. we act like we're strong followers when we pretend mm-hmm. that we are uh, a deep in prayer yes. and that we are uh, deeper than we truly yes. are Absolutely. we when we when we begin to put on that front mm-hmm. we begin to delude delude ourselves mm-hmm. um and when it, it's a dangerous place to be, Tony. It is a very dangerous place to be because the enemy has no problem with Tony doing a good thing. There's no problem with Tony doing a good thing. The enemy has an issue when Tony does the righteous thing. Uh, when Tony does things in the, God, the way that God would have them done. Uh, as long as I'm doing good things, <laughs> he has no problem at all with that. There's a big difference between good and 
righteousness. There's a there's a big difference between the two. The motive has to be in place. Good is based on acts that I do, and I want that pat on the back. It it helps somebody out, but I'm helping this person out because I want to be recognized. Righteousness has more to do with doing that which God would have us to do because it's his righteousness. We seek the kingdom of God in his righteousness. And so when I'm functioning that way, the enemy has a major problem with that. And when I am in, when I'm being attacked or anyone is having issues uh, with the enemy, you can't Say to the enemy, oh, well, you know, I know the Lord's going to make a way. No, you've got to give the enemy scripture. You've got to give the enemy uh, the word of God, which reminds him that he has no power and authority over you, only that which you give. And when we don't study the word of God and know the word of God to live in the kingdom of God and allow it to manifest itself through us in the world, then we're going to have some big problems. And it's not because uh, um, we can have knowledge. And Dan, a lot of times we fall into this arena. We have knowledge of the word of God, but we don't have, we don't comprehend it uh, to the point, or we don't understand it to the point of comprehending it. And then number three, we don't apply it. So you have to go past knowledge. You have to have understanding and comprehension. Then you have to get to that third level of application. And that is where the enemy just says, Tony is not going to apply this to his life. He knows this stuff. He understands and he comprehends it, but he's not going to apply it to his life. And so let me pose a question to him just as he did. E, Did God say See to see if I know? You know, to see Mm -hmm. if I'm going to act this out. And this is where he catches us at most of the time. We don't have the appropriate response and the application to that which he's challenging or testing or tempting us uh, with. Put it that way. And and here is a a big piece of the problem. Mm -hmm. And and it's us. We we are a big piece of the problem because (laughs) you you hit all over it there. You know, we we can read, we can go through um, those kids programs at church and we could we could learn verse after verse and get, you know, badges and stars and plaques for memorizing scripture. But when we don't internalize those same scriptures, Mm -hmm. when we don't apply them, as you said, then they are just Knowledge, yeah, yep. you know, it, we we have to really take time and study the Word of God and go beyond studying the Word of God because when you're honestly mm-hmm. studying, you you can't help but but think, how does this apply? Yeah. You know, how do I apply this to my life? Mm-hmm. You know, because you as you study the Word of God and you, and you grow deeper and mm-hmm. you begin to pray more fervently, you want to see those things realized in your life. Absolutely, and I think until we as men begin to truly understand our purpose in life and what we're supposed to be doing uh, in this world that we live in until we really get a grip on being created in his image and being able to function uh, like God, um, God being omnipotent. And uh, when we look at the word constructed, we look at potent, we look at potential, understanding that God is our source And God would not ask us to do anything that he hasn't deposited within us. So everything that God asks us to do, we have to make a demand on that potential that lies within us. And if we don't make a demand on it, then it'll lie there. In order for us to be all that we can be to change the world, man has to truly um, understand and comprehend and apply uh, what God has given back to him, and that is dominion. We didn't lose heaven, so I don't know what our rush is to 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 get to heaven. And all we heaven want to get no. Earth is, the earth is yours, and we're supposed to exercise that dominion that God has given us on the earth so that we will be able to see it be done on earth as it is in heaven. We don't have to wait uh, to have in heaven on earth. All we have to do is allow the rule of God in our hearts so that we can manifest everything in heaven 
on earth. And that's something that we can make a decision to do, Dan, at any time. And we have to encourage and inspire uh, other men uh, to do the same and understand, I don't care what you've done in life. It doesn't take away from who God says you are or what God says you can do. I don't care what you've done from A to Z. You're still who God says you are, and he's counting on you. And there's so much more to be said on this, and I hope we can continue the conversation next week as we come together once again, because it's important that we understand who we are and what a kingdom looks like and where we fit within that kingdom, what God has for us to do here today. We'll talk to you again next week. You've been listening to Your Life with your hosts, Dr. Tony Hare and Dan DeBruler. Join us again next time as we explore the questions everyone has about life, love, parenting, and relationships. Your Life airs Tuesdays at 2 p.m. on Christian 105.7, and you can always download, listen, and share online. Just look for Your Life wherever you listen to podcasts.